The sport of track and field is one of the most beautiful in the world, but sometimes it sucks. You already know what I'm talking about. Let's dive right in. Last night in my hometown of Eugene, Oregon, I went to Hayward Field to watch track and field's biggest moment. I'm talking about Oregon 2022, the world championships. And though I haven't been to many sessions, I definitely wasn't going to miss the men's 110 meter hurdles, mainly because I wanted to see my friend Devin Allen win his very first world title. Coming into this meet, Devin Allen had run 12.84. Now this time was the fastest time in the world by over a 10th of a second. Only two guys this year had run under 13 seconds. He, I'm not gonna say he was a lock for it, but come on, it's his home track. You know, he's a duck. I have a feeling he was gonna put on a show. We may have been able to see a world record. Now, before we get into the actual race, I wanna talk about something that the cameras didn't even really cover. And that is that the defending Olympic gold medal, Hansel Parchment, he was injured. So he looked phenomenal through the rounds, but when he came out, he lined up and he started to go through the motion, started to run his first few hurdles. And all of a sudden he pulled up, grabbed his hamstring, and he, 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 he like, collapsed basically on the inside of the field. So right on the inside of the track where they have all these banners and signage, he fell down and we didn't know where he was. I mean, I'm, I'm like right at the track, on the track, great seats, and I can't see him. Me and Sam, Coach Sam, who were watching this were like, where did Parchment go? And the seven other competitors had to get into the blocks without the defending Olympic gold medalist there. If I'm one of those seven, as much as my heart goes out to a fellow competitor, you never wanna see someone in pain. I'm thinking to myself, this is an incredible opportunity. I no longer have to race the defending Olympic gold medalist for this title. Instead of beating seven people on the track, I only have to beat six. Your statistical odds just went way up. And I know that's what every one of these competitors is thinking as they get into the blocks to run this final men's 110 hurdles. Let's roll a tape. Now, one thing I wanna mention, it's pretty cool to see three Americans in this final, right? You got Devin Allen, I already mentioned him. You got Holloway, you got the youngster Cunningham. They're all phenomenally talented, but on paper, right? If you're just looking at who's performed the best this season, your money has to be on Devin Allen. But Holloway has the better starts. Like historically, Holloway has a much better start. He gets half a step on Allen, but it's Devin Allen's incredible finish that's ultimately what allows him to beat Holloway on occasion. So Devin Allen knows he needs a great start here. Let's get this thing going. Runner set. Boom, and look at that, a perfect start. But it's not, they call them back, right? It's a false start. But because someone had a false start, they are gonna disqualify an athlete. And at the track, initially they said it was lane two. The athlete from Poland, they said he was the one that false started and the crowd breathed a sigh of relief. But then when they called them back, they actually said that no, lane three, Devin Allen was the one who false started. Let's watch that real quick, that start. Absolutely not. You see, they fire the gun, the athletes go all at once. You're saying to me, Nick, how can this possibly be a false start? I wouldn't call this a false start. I think what we're calling this is too fast of a reaction time. Now, let's break those terms down. Right now, you have what's called a false start. You can't have athletes false starting, right? That would get an unfair advantage. So if you go before the gun fires, that's a clear false start, you're disqualified. Now, you're asking me, Nick, well, what's, what's a, if it's not a false start, if it's too fast reaction time, how is that possible? Isn't having a fast reaction time a really great thing? Yes, it is. The blocks are connected to the timing system. And when the athlete pushes into the blocks to go forward, it actually triggers and measures that reaction time. The time between the gun being fired and their feet pushing into the blocks. Now, I'm not a sprinter, right? I never use blocks. I was an 800 meter runner, so I didn't have to worry about this. But I actually did a ton of research for this because I want you guys to understand where this rule comes from. Now, this rule that was set by the IAAF on research done back in the 90s, this rule has harmed so many people's careers. Get this, it's based on research from the 90s in which a total response time of eight male finished sprinters, they were investigating the average time between the start signal and reaching a value of 110% of the force exerted on the starting blocks in the ready position was 121 milliseconds. Standard deviation was about 14 milliseconds for the front leg and about 11 milliseconds for the rear leg. So what does that tell us? tells us that one, we don't have a very statistically large amount of data that we've created this rule, that these are not elite sprinters, they were average sprinters, um, and that if we actually take elite sprinters, someone like Devin Allen, one of the most elite athletes the world has ever seen, don't we think that his reaction time might be a little bit quicker than eight average finished male sprinters? 
Yes, absolutely. This article goes on to talk about subsequent studies. I'm not gonna get into every single one, but you know, I've linked it in the description below if you wanna get into this. But all of the different chains that have to happen, right? The noise traveling from the gun to the ears, the signal going from the ears to the brainstem, the brainstem all the way down the chain. And this article actually estimates that a really, really elite athlete could actually respond within 84 milliseconds. So you look at Devin Allen who had a 99.9 .9 millisecond reaction time. That's actually very, very realistic for an athlete of his caliber. We are disqualifying athletes left and right for being too good at their jobs. This is not about knowing the rules. No one's purposefully breaking the rules. They're not predicting the gun. They're just really having a great start. They should be rewarded for a great start, not punished. Now, Devin Allen, what an absolute class act. He reviews it, he protests, but ultimately he respectfully walks off the track and allows his fellow competitors to restart the race. Let's watch that race now. Only six athletes now lined up, right? The defending Olympic gold medalist out due to injury. Devin Allen, the fastest man in the world this year, out due to some BS reaction time. We'll get into that a little bit more. But right now, six men fighting for three medals. Holloway, probably the clear favorite here. He's in lane four. Let's watch this start. And they're off. Boom, six men sprinting after it. Holloway with a great start. He's clearly out front. He's got a half stride on everybody. Just such a beautiful herder. Look at this guy go. He's the defending world champion. Oh, but there comes Cunningham. Cunningham almost gets him at the line. There it is, USA 1-2. Oh, I have to imagine that would have been a sweep. I got three takeaways. Let's get into them. Takeaway number one, as frustrated as we all are, I think we have to give credit where credit's due. We have three medalists, right? It, it may not have been the final that we wanted to watch or that we were expecting, but we have three incredibly talented medalists. Huge shout out to Holloway, Cunningham, and Martinez. You guys fought through a lot of adversity this year, going through the rounds, and then all the chaos of the finals. You still rose up, got the job done, earned that hardware. Huge congrats to you three. Takeaway number two, this is just my opinion, but I do watch a lot of track and field. I believe that Devin Allen would have won this race, right? He's the fastest man in the world this year, and he had a phenomenal start. If there's any weakness in Devin Allen's race, it's his start. He comes home like a train. Sometimes Holloway's got two steps on him after the first you know, 10 meters, and somehow Allen still manages to close that gap. The weakest part of Devin Allen's race is his start. And here at the biggest moment of his entire career, he actually has the perfect start. There's no way he was gonna lose this race. I really, really believe that Devin Allen would have won this race. I think he would have run 12, 85 to 87, somewhere in there. But maybe with the home crowd cheering him on and that adrenaline, maybe we would have seen a world record. We'll never know. And takeaway number three, it's time for a rule change. Okay, the studies have been done and updated since that 1990s Finnish study. Reaction times are possible to be faster than 100 milliseconds. And I want to point out this competition specifically because they're using a new timing system. And actually, I don't like to give credit to the trolls on Let's Run too often, but this is brilliant. Somebody broke this down and I want to point it out. The number of reaction times between 100 milliseconds and 110 uh, milliseconds in reaction times, and this means it's four times greater than any other world championship in history. The number of reaction times between 90 milliseconds and 99 milliseconds is greater than all other world championships combined. What this means is that we are seeing equipment being used that is so advanced, that is so hypersensitive, that it is picking up these athletes' incredibly talented, incredibly world-class reaction times. Based on more recent studies, we know that people can react down to 84 milliseconds. Anything faster than 80 milliseconds would certainly be predicting the gun. Again, no one's gonna risk a world championship title trying to predict the gun. We have to lower it to 80 milliseconds. We have to stop harming all of these talented athletes that are having incredibly great starts. Rant over, I'm gonna have more reaction videos coming from the 22 World Championships, but for the next 10 days, I'm going on vacation. If you wanna follow along, follow me over on Instagram. I'll see you guys next week.